This is question 13, paper 2, from the SQA specimen paper for National 5 Mathematics. We've got a yacht sailing from a harbour. It goes due east to sea, and then on a bearing of 40 degrees, it travels up to D. And there's various lengths given to us. And we're asked to calculate the size of angle C, D, H, which is this angle way up here. Now, information that we know, we certainly know two sides of this triangle, but on the face of it, we don't appear to know any other information. We certainly don't know an angle. We're not given directly given an angle. But the information we do have is concerned with the point C. So if we examine point C a bit more close, closely, um, north line from C and the line that's coming due east from H would imply that's a right angle. The north line and a, a line from H to C that's due east uh, would give you a 90 degree angle there. The other piece of information we're given is the bearing as we travel from C up to D and that bearing, remember bearings you face north and you turn clockwise and that angle there is 40 degrees. So 90 plus 40 gives us 130. So we now know that this angle at C in this big triangle is 130. And I think that's sufficient to for us to find the angle up at D. So let's just mark all this down, D, C, H. And remember, the line opposite D, angle D, the side opposite angle D is called little d. Side opposite angle C is called little c. And these two we know. We know that uh, this side little c is 79 kilometers. And this side little d, which is opposite angle d, is 50 kilometers. The information that we got about this angle was that it's 130 degrees and we're asked to find angle D. Now this will be the sine rule because we're involved in angles and opposite sides. Angles and opposite sides. So we use the sine rule which is given to you in your formula sheet is A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So translating this into the angles letters that were given here, um, we would use C over angle C, sine of angle C. That's down in England. No, Wales, isn't it? Angle C. Um, C over sine C is equal to D over sine D. And substituting values, 79 over sine 130 is equal to 50 over sine 130. Sorry, sine D. 130 was angle C. So there's the substitution being done. Now, I tend to do this the long way around because I like doing the same thing to both sides. And I would certainly multiply both sides by sine D, which it would then appear on the top of the first fraction and it would disappear from the bottom of the second one. So multiplying both sides by sine D and also multiplying both sides by sine 130. This will disappear from the bottom of that fraction and we'll get it appearing at the top of the fraction on the right. So there's multiplying top and bottom 
and sorry, multiplying both sides by sine d and also both sides by sine 130. And then to get sine d all on its own, all we need to do now is divide by 79. So we have 50 times the sine of 130 divided by 79. And that requires a bit of calculation. So let's put in 50 times sine of 130 degrees. And this calculator, I need to close the brackets on the angle, divided by 79. That equals zero point four eight four etc. And to find what that angle D is, we have to find the angle whose sign is this value. And in this calculator there it is, the angle whose sign is that answer that we had there. On normal calculators, this is sign to the minus 1, or second function sign. This A stands for arc sign. But nice to think of it as the angle whose sign is uh, this number here. So that gives us 29.0018, so approximately to the nearest degree, it's 29 degrees. And let's put that information in to the nearest degree. So 29 degrees up there. So let's move on to the second part of the question. Hence calculate the bearing. We could probably do that up here. Part B. That was part A working. So hence Calculate the bearing on which the yacht must sail to return directly to the harbour. So the yacht is up here at point D. There's our north line. And we require to know the bearing. That's Remember, that's all the way around clockwise from facing your north direction. So there's the angle that we're after. And there's the point D that we're at. Um, we have to involve the information that we've already got, which was, first of all, that this angle here, the bearing of D from C, was 40 degrees. Now, what I tend to do in these cases, if we're trying to take this information up to this point, we would just extend the line. It usually works. And there you can see that that also is 40 degrees. It's a, if you like, it's an upside down F shape, corresponding angles, F shaped angles. So that's 40 degrees. Uh, we certainly know this part of that angle. That's 180 degrees. So there's first part's 40, next part's 180, this was a straight line, and the last part, this part in here, well that's just what we calculated in part A to be 29 degrees. So required bearing will be the sum of these. The required bearing is the 40 degrees up there, which came from down there, the 180 degrees, because we extended this line, it's a straight line, and the 29 degrees that we got from part A. So 180 and 40 is 220, plus 29 is 249. So it's 249 degrees. It doesn't matter that this was approximated, because bearings are always given to the nearest degree and adding or subtracting numbers has no effect on their, uh, the error in a number. It's only if you're multiplying approximated answers by say 10 and that multiplies the error by 10 and you might be into difficulties. 
So there's the required bearing. Let's just see that we've answered it. Hence, calculate the bearing in which the yacht must sail to return directly to the harbour. So we've said required bearings 249.